Hey everyone, this is uh, Mayor Robert Garcia. It's May the 13th and we have another uh, city briefing and we'll also of course answer media questions. And after we answer the media questions, we will also do a, a recap in Spanish. So we'll get everything in Espanol and we have Alice from the health department who will be doing our Spanish uh, recap translation. And of course, uh, Paola who is uh, safely, safely distanced behind me uh, who will be doing our ASL translation as always. So thank you to them. Uh, and I wanna welcome our airport director uh, which is uh, Cynthia Guidry, who is here with us, and she'll be giving us an update today about the airport and how the airport is really transitioning to this uh, kind of COVID-19 uh, reality we're in and uh, what can we expect from the airport as far as what we're doing to keep it safe moving forward. And so Cynthia will have an update for us, and I want to welcome her for joining us uh, today. So let me begin by just giving some of the overall numbers uh, and some of the overall data. I uh, want to, of course, start with the data. Uh, as of today, we have 1,094 residents who have tested positive for COVID. Uh, a, a couple of things that are important to note. Um, the, there is a, a bigger increase today of positive cases, uh, and that is due from a delay in reporting from a private lab that's actually contracted with LA County. And so our health officials are telling me that, the, that these actual results from today some date as far back as April the 1st. And so it's harder, it's hard to uh, parse out. We're trying to parse out which ones are actually from, um, uh, from today and yesterday versus others that are far as weeks and weeks in the past. And so um, for whatever reason, there was one private lab uh, that did not get the results in completely. And so that's why you're seeing this big number today. And we'll try to provide more information as to where that number comes from. But again, some of these are as far as April 1st. Uh, and um, these results are from the LA County testing sites in Long Beach. So not from the Long Beach sites, but from the LA County partnership sites. So that's, that's where some of those are coming from. Uh, more generally, there's uh, over 677 people that have recovered from COVID across the city of Long Beach, which is a really great sign. Uh, we've had one other um, fatality. Uh, and so that's of course uh, very tragic and it brings our, our death total in Long Beach to 49. Uh, uh, individuals. And like I've mentioned before, uh, COVID-19 is, is the leading cause uh, of, of death in Long Beach. When you look at the major areas uh, that people die from in the city, uh, whether you're looking at um, automobile accidents or, or, or violent crime, uh, COVID-19 obviously is the, is the most serious thing that we're facing. Um, of the 49 deaths, uh, 38 have been associated with long-term care facilities. We've talked about that being our biggest challenge. So let me move forward on a couple other items. Uh, the first is testing. Uh, we have now completed over 20,000 tests in the city of Long Beach with the capacity to do over 1,000 a day. And this is such an important part of our tracking to reopen. I want to remind everyone that if you feel you have a symptom or if you're a worker and you think you've been exposed, uh, please go get a test today. And you can get information at our testing uh, site at longbeach.gov of course, on, under the testing note. So please get tested. We want folks uh, to get tested. The other announcement we have today is uh, we are now beginning to hear from, uh, from doctors, physicians, uh, dentists, and health providers that are beginning to relax their rules uh, within their offices to allow more patients to come in. Now, it's important to note that um, the state never fully shut down uh, doctor's offices or dentists, but most medical providers have had a, uh, a, a limited um, uh, window to see folks because they're only seeing essentially emergency patients. But we want to let folks know that most primary physician, physicians, uh, most other medical providers are now starting to see uh, patients. And if you feel like you need an appointment with your primary physician, uh, if you need uh, a, um, uh, you feel like you need to go see the dentist again, a lot of our doctors and medical providers are now back to taking regular appointments. Uh, before they were taking mostly emergency appointments uh, or critical needs, but that's beginning uh, to change. And so we want to make sure people knew that today, and that's a transition that's happening within these medical offices. And you can imagine that these spaces. Um, are really focused on sanitation and making sure that everything is sanitized and, and clean and healthy. And so we want to thank all of our medical partners. Uh, as a reminder, individuals without insurance uh, um, or if you're a Medi-Cal recipient, we still have our free 
a rapid response clinic at Long Beach City College, and whether you're documented, not documented, insured, not insured, uh, that clinic now has been open for many weeks, and we are uh, ready to, to assist you uh, if you need support. Um, but please also know that the rapid response clinic uh, is also, while it's no cost, um, uh, it, we're, we're beginning to see less and less use of it um, uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. And so if that continues, um, it is likely that we will be probably shutting down the clinic at some point in the near future. It was an emergency clinic. Uh, and we're looking at ways of taking some of those services and testing out into neighborhoods. And so uh, you, you might see that personnel uh, focus more into going into um, uh, dense neighborhoods, uh, neighborhoods that really need uh, additional medical support, and so we might have some of that move around the city. But please know if, if, that if you need assistance or you need support, that clinic is open to you um, today, and we want folks to use it because we're seeing less folks at the clinic. Now I want to talk to you about reopenings. Uh, we know that today uh, across Long Beach and across LA County, uh, the beaches uh, are open for active recreation. Uh, that means that you're able to uh, run uh, and walk on the path, or you can ride your bike through the bike path. Uh, swimming is available, kayaking, um, anything that's active. Uh, but what you cannot do is, is gather. So there is no opportunity for folks uh, to, to picnic or to bring blankets and, and lay out, um, no chairs. Uh, all that needs to stay at home. Um, beach restrooms are open but are being disinfected and cleaned. Uh, and we are also reopening Rosie's Dog Beach, which we know is a, a huge ask for a lot of people. But again, um, please take your dog through, allow the dog to enjoy, but no gathering and no groups, and make sure that we are physically distancing. We also want to encourage folks, of course, that if you're going to be, if you're around others, you need to wear face coverings, uh, and that we're constantly washing our hands. And if you're feeling sick at all, please stay home. These reopenings of our beaches here in Long Beach uh, align with the county beaches that are opening all up and down the coast. Uh, and they are following the state's statewide guidelines on, on beaches. I also want to remind individuals uh, that we have our trails and our parks are also open for active and passive, uh, I'm sorry, for active recreation. Uh, and that we have um, uh, and are seeing a lot of people enjoy them. Uh, for vast majority of folks are doing the right thing. And are, and are really enjoying these as, as active recreation spaces. There are still a lot of individuals, um, obviously not as many, most are following the rules, uh, that are not doing as good of a job as following the rules. And so I would encourage you guys to please distance, be safe. This is still a serious health crisis. And we still are uh, many days away from looking at the data to know if those hospitalizations uh, and, our, and our hospital bedroom rate are going to spike. And we're really hoping that they don't do so and that we're able to manage those as best possible. Uh, now I want to talk to you about our health order amendment. Um, of course, we have opened up uh, all of retail across the city to, for curbside pickup or curbside service. Uh, that is currently in place. And we've had a question in particular that I want to clarify. Folks have asked about like dog grooming or pet services. Uh, those are allowed under the state and city order. However, it needs to be a curbside service. And what I mean by that is if you have, if you are a pet groomer, um, that pet and your customers need to essentially pull up to your location. You can take your animal inside, but the customers still cannot go inside the store. So if it's, if, it's, if it's a curbside grooming service where you can bring the animal inside, then that's okay. We've had that question a lot. Um, so all retail can open with curbside pickup, but not folks cannot go inside the, 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 the retailers. And um, I'm being asked, why is that the case? Or why can't we open up restaurants? Or uh, why are we following LA County when it comes to reopening up groomers? Uh, none of those are actually um, completely accurate. The truth is, is that the state health orders supersede our local Long Beach health orders. The state health orders today do not allow restaurants to open, do not allow people to go into retailers, do not allow groomers and salons, uh, and do not allow us to do anything beyond what we're doing today. So um, if you hear, or I've, I've read a couple of messages where folks has, have said, you know, Long Beach is independent, we have our own health department. That is absolutely right. We control our own health destiny. But our health department 
does not supersede the California State Department of Health. And they currently do not allow any of the other activities or for us to move more, more quickly than we already are. And the second big question I've been getting is, well, we're hearing that some, that the governor is allowing some restaurants to reopen uh, or, or some retailers to reopen. That is true, but only in rural counties with small populations. And so Long Beach does not qualify for that. LA does not qualify for that. Orange County does not qualify for that. It's only the very small rural counties at the very top of the state, north of Sacramento and other places that may qualify for those expedited restaurant openings. We do not. And so uh, as frustrating as business owners and others want things to reopen, uh, the truth is, is even if we thought it was safe to do so, we can't. And I think it's important to be honest uh, uh, with people and, and to spread information that is actually factual. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So I want to remind uh, individuals uh, of that as well. Um, and, and with that, I want to um, turn this over to our airport director. We invited her to join us today because she's got a lot of really important updates about the airport and what's happening at the airport. Um, and I want to thank her. It's a difficult time for the airport as well and for all of, uh, of aviation as well. So uh, Ms. Guidry. Well, thank you for inviting me here today, Mayor. Um, I'm so appreciative of how you and the city council have really kept everyone informed. It's so important to our traveling public and to our local businesses. So before I talk about the facial coverings and, and the things that we're doing at the airport, I'd like to start by providing an overall update on Long Beach Airport. So like airports across the nation, Long Beach Airport is experiencing a major decline in flights and passenger traffic, traffic as a result of COVID-19. Our passenger numbers for April decreased by about 95% compared to the same period last year. The sharp decrease in passenger numbers means an equally sharp decrease in airport revenue. And our preliminary estimate is a decline of 10 to 20 million in operating revenue at this, at this time, at this point. So this impacts not only Long Beach Airport, but also the many businesses that rely on the economic impact that we generate. So that includes rental car providers, our parking companies, concessionaires, and our general aviation community, and so many others. The airport and surrounding businesses are economic engines that support the local and regional economy. Thankfully, last month, we were thrown a lifeline when the Federal Aviation Administration allocated $18.4 million in CARES Act funds to Long Beach Airport. This was a huge win for the airport and our city. And I want to thank the Long Beach Congressional Delegation for recognizing the financial impact COVID-19 has had on air travel and specifically on Long Beach Airport. In addition to debt service payments, the funding will support critical operations such as staffing, maintenance and repairs, and essential services and supplies. Despite the financial impact from the decrease in passenger numbers, I am so grateful that the public is following the CDC guidance and avoiding non-essential travel at this time. And as the economy slowly reopens, I want to share with you some of the steps the airport has taken to ensure a safe and healthy travel experience for us all. We are working with airlines and airport business partners on a weekly basis, on a weekly basis to improve safety and following the health orders to still ensure a comfortable travel experience for which we are known. We have stepped up our cleaning and disinfection protocols in public spaces. We have floor decals and other measures in place to ensure physical distancing of six feet. And as the mayor mentioned, Yesterday, we announced that facial coverings are required to be worn by all passengers, employees, and visitors at the airport. And this is right in line with the guidance from public health experts and consistent with precautions taken by airports across the nation. All five commercial airlines that serve Long Beach Airport, as well as concessions and rental car companies, also require facial coverings for both employees and customers. So during the TSA security screening, 
You may be asked to adjust or briefly remove your facial covering. That's, that's quite okay. You'll also notice that all TSA officers are also wearing facial coverings. But it's important to remember that facial coverings must cover the nose and mouth, whether that comes in the form of bandanas, neck gaiters, or cloth masks with ties or straps. And don't forget, when you're at the airport, to maintain physical distancing and wash your hands frequently while at the airport because all of these items and things that we can do really support each other and we can do it all together. In addition to the safety measures I've just outlined, by its very nature, Long Beach Airport as a small, small hub airport, we offer many advantages to the traveling public in this post-COVID world. We are known for a stress-free travel experience away from the crowds and the congestion. We've also have been one of the very few airports in the nation that has a large amount of outdoor space. Our beautiful outdoor garden available to passengers post security. We believe all these elements are important considerations when the public starts to fly again. And we're very much looking forward to welcoming back our passengers. We can't wait. So speaking of the future, I'd like to update you on the status of our plans to transform the airport's pre-security experience, which we call phase two, and many of you are familiar with that, of the Terminal Area Improvements Program. You'll recall that we completed phase one back in 2012 when we constructed the beautiful north and south concourses along with the outdoor garden area. Now phase two will modernize and streamline the pre-security experience and also will include a seismic retrofit and revitalization of our historic 1941 terminal building. But given the financial impact of COVID-19, we are taking a hard look at all of our expenses, including our capital program. We've worked with our city's financial management department and an airport financial consulting firm to develop and refine several cost saving scenarios for our phase two construction program. And as I presented to council yesterday, we'd like to resequence our construction schedule to ease our cash flow requirements and buy ourselves more time to recover and reevaluate. We are still moving forward with our baggage inspection facility, which is primarily TSA grant funded. And we are going to begin construction of our ticketing building. But depending on the economic conditions we encounter along the way, that contract has built-in exit ramps available to us. And we are continuously and cautiously monitoring the travel industry on a weekly basis to guide our decision making. And the key for us is to execute a capital program that is flexible and best positions the airport and the city for success. And of course, as we continue through this process, we will be considering what the future of airports may look like in the post-COVID world and the desire for a touchless experience, a touchless journey with ample space for physical distancing. So before I close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the frontline employees in the city of Long Beach working together and as well as our Long Beach airport team either as a city employee or with many other business partners. As, long, as the director of Long Beach Airport, you know, we are part of our nation's transportation critical infrastructure. And I thank you to the entire team for keeping things running. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. And Ms. Kidrid, Kidrid does a great job of, uh, of running our Long Beach Airport. We're thankful to have her on our team. And she's also a Long Beach resident, so she loves, she loves our airport and loves Long Beach, so we're happy to, to, to have her. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to Jake, who's going to uh, do some questions from the press. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, moving forward, we have our first question from Rachel Jordan from Channel 7. Go ahead, Rachel. Hey, so this question is for the mayor. Um, one of the guidelines in the amendment of the new city order says that face coverings are not required while engaging in solo physically distance exercise. So does this mean that face coverings are required at the dog park or dog beaches where solo exercise isn't really typical? Yeah, Rachel, you cut out in the first part of the question. I think you asked a question about face coverings if they are required when you're closer than six feet. Is that what you asked? I'm sorry. No, no, no. So, so the, uh, one of the new guidelines says that face coverings 
are not required while engaging in solo physically distance exercise, but does this mean that face coverings are required at, at the dog park or at dog beaches where solo exercise isn't really something that you do there? So uh, face coverings, and I'll get clarification from our health folks to get that out to you, but as far as I understand it, and if I don't have this correct, then Jake, uh, correct me, uh, face coverings are required at any time that you are within a, a, the, 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 the six foot uh, range of someone. If you are gonna be, if you're out alone, uh, and you're out alone and you're walking your dog, uh, you don't ha you're not required to have a face covering. However, if you are out with, with, a, with, a, with your dog and you know you're gonna be within close contact with other individuals, you should be wearing a face covering. If you're at a dog park, uh, you should be wearing a face covering if there's gonna be other folks in the dog park. And I would assume that that question's almost always gonna be yes. And, and, and certainly when you are uh, entering any restaurant to get, do the to-go or the pickup or any retailer that's doing the curbside, uh, you are required to have a face covering, as are the folks that are uh, uh, bringing you the food or, or, the, or, or the items. And Jake, is that, is that correct? I believe that's... Absolutely, Mayor. Yeah, the goal is to make sure that everyone has face covering. So even if you are going into an area where there are people around you, please take a face covering with you in case you find yourself in a position where you're closer than six feet. Right. Put that face covering on to protect you and the people around you. And the general, the, 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 the general rule that I've been following on face coverings and that other folks have is that if, if you're going to go outside and you're going to be around people of any type, wear a face covering. And uh, if you're going to take a walk in your neighborhood alone, uh, and you're not going to be around anyone and you don't want to wear a face covering, it's, it's not required. But if you are going to be in contact with people, and I think a vast majority of the time, you are going to interact with other individuals when you're out. And so having a face covering with you, I think is, is, I think is important. Um, I, I was on Second Street today uh, and I, I had my face covering and I think most people I walked by, ran into, had their face coverings. So I think that's the general rule, but I will, check on the order itself to make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's all correct, and Jake will double, will double check on that. Absolutely, and, and some of the questions that we're getting on Facebook Live are relative to that, and please everyone understand that the people that you see speaking in front of us, uh, they may not have face coverings, but they are absolutely all physically distanced from each other, and even our, our interpreter is physically distanced, yep. even though it may not look like that on camera, so. Six feet away. That's right. <laughs> all right, moving forward, Haley, go ahead with your question from the press telegram. Hi, yeah, my question is about um, the beaches reopening today. I just wanted to ask if there have been any um, problems or warnings or citations issued um, associated with, you know, people either being um, using, trying to use them for passive use or even at the beach parking lots, people trying to park there. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know about today, but I do know that we have given out some citations. I mean, I, I asked the question about, for example, uh, I did see some um, kind of gathering at Bixby Park and, and, and on the bluff. Uh, and I know that, that police have been out there, there, ha there have been citations given out, but more importantly, there's been a lot of education that's happened. I went there today, and actually, I'm not sure if this is because maybe the, the beach is now open, but um, there was less of an impact, I felt, at Bixby Park and the Bluff today during the day than I'd seen in, 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 um, in the past. So I, I, that could just be a reflection of, of the time I was there. Uh, but um, there have been some citations given. Majority of people are following the rules, uh, but there still are some that are that are not. And so it's not going to be a perfect system. There is not going to be perfect compliance, and we're not going to be able to have a, an enforcement system that that is able to you know cite everyone that's 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 breaking the rule. But um, but the police are out there, the lifeguards are out there, park staff is out there, uh, and I think a lot of us you know obviously see uh, what's happening at the beach or the bluff. But you know this is a huge city. And so we're not only just patrolling the beach and the bluff. Uh, we have a wetlands and parks and trails all over the city. It's enormous. And so we have to make sure that our police and everyone else is everywhere. Um, and not just everywhere patrolling those, it, those issues, but remember that uh, crime and everything else that used to happen in a city before COVID is still happening. So the resources are, are everywhere. And the best way to, to, to deal with those issues are for, for people to self police themselves, which I, which, which I hope is happening. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. The next question is from Valerie. Go ahead, Valerie. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so yesterday the county said that um, the order would be extended, their order would be
extended for three months and people were pretty shocked. Um, Long Beach's order is indefinite. So what does our timeline look like locally? Well, our order, we don't have a date on our order. And so um, that when we put the last uh, update to our order out, we removed the May 15th date and essentially aligned with most of what the state is doing, which is not setting a date. Uh, and so it's open-ended, um, which is what, what, the, what, what the city of California is at. And the reason we did that was because we don't know what, where the data is going to take us. I think it would be um, unwise and, more importantly, the health professionals within the health department believe that it's much better to have an open-ended date uh, because, it may, yes, it may take uh, a while, but it also may, may be that we do really well in the next couple of weeks, and so and we're able to uh, be flexible with that date. So we don't have, there is no, it's an open-ended date in Long Beach. It's the same way in the state, the same way in Pasadena, with the, which is the other health jurisdiction in the county. And I, I think, so I, I don't want to be, I'm not, this isn't, I, I think, I could be wrong, that LA County uh, either today uh, clarified um, what Dr. Farr said the other, the other day. And I, I, I think they're also moving to an open-ended date. I, I, that, that could be incorrect, um, but certainly Long Beach has an open-ended date. That, and so our timeline will be guided by what our hospitalization rate says. Everyone should pay attention to you know, next week, when we, when we do these briefings next week, we're going to talk about the hospitalization rate having had uh, you know, a couple weeks of data from the, when we started these reopenings. And so that's going to be important for us to look at. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see what, what, what that says. All right. Thank you, Mayor. All right. So now moving forward, we're going to go into the questions that we're seeing on our, some of our social media streaming here. And the first question, Mayor, there's obviously concern about lost revenue and, and people are obviously concerned about taxes. How will the city make up for the lost revenue? Is there any plan for that? And there's a concern. Are we going to increase taxes for that? Uh, uh, well, there's, uh, well, first of all, just so, I mean, in Long Beach, uh, taxes, the, the city doesn't have the ability to increase taxes. Only uh, the public can do that at the ballot box. Um, uh, and, but what I will say is uh, the, the fear of lost revenue is, is real. Um, uh, we all, when you hear uh, business owners that are worried about their workers, um, I'm worried about those workers, and I'm also worried about the uh, incredible decline in revenues that, that our city is seeing, uh, we are going to have to make some very, very difficult decisions from a budget perspective in the weeks and months ahead. And I'll just give you some examples. Um, number one, uh, our largest employers in the city of Long Beach are education institutions. You're talking about Cal State Long Beach, Long Beach City College, Long Beach Unified. They are all going to be making significant cuts to their budgets because the, that state funding is just not going to come down the way uh, it was with these huge deficits happening at the state of California. They're our largest employers. That is going to dramatically impact those, those workers and that workforce that then impacts our economy uh, uh, within Long Beach. Um, if you look at, and, and so education is our biggest industry along with uh, the port. Uh, the port is seeing declines in, declining revenue, uh, declining cargo. Um, that is going to impact our economy when you have your two biggest industries uh, really um, not doing well because of this, this, this pandemic. And then you take the city of Long Beach. How does the city of Long Beach pay for the police officers, the firefighters, the paramedics that everyone expects? Uh, it's a variety of different ways, of course, um, different revenue sources. But a big part of that, of course, is, 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 is sales taxes. Uh, or um, uh, it's, of course, uh, property tax and other, other, other pieces of that. And we only get, of course, a small percentage of these, of these buckets right, to take care of the city. But those are all declining. And so when the economy is shut down, um, we're, we're also very concerned because those revenues aren't coming in so that we can pay for those paramedics that we need to be accessible to all of you or to fix your street uh, and to, or to pick up um, uh, uh, the street services. And so uh, what, what we're going to have to do is I, I'm going to have to present a budget to the city council uh, as is, as I do every single year. I present a budget to the city council um, in just a couple months from now. I can guarantee you that the, this is going to be a budget that will have some um, drastic cuts uh, it's going to be very painful to the city, and it's going to be, and that's going to translate into a loss of services and the type of services that we expect here in the in the city of Long Beach, and so there is a huge impact from a revenue perspective. But I don't see the city uh, today, right now, um, 
we are what we're trying to do is support the community and people that are that are um, that are hurting for for uh, because they're out of work. And so what we're trying to do is use our resources we currently have, uh, uh, which is, that's why we've suspended you know parking citations for so long. That's why we're not forcing people to pay their utility bills if they can't pay. Um, that's why we are uh, not uh, uh, enforcing all the same type of citations or fines. Sure, those could certainly uh, uh, sometimes help with, 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 with the city revenue, but what's more important is helping people right now. And so we're gonna have to take care of the budget hole uh, and we're gonna have to um, really not, not really look at, at revenue production because there is nowhere to look for that. We're gonna have to make cuts unless that the state, but especially the federal government, uh, gets serious about supporting cities. And we have been, in fact, I was on a, on a call this morning uh, with one of our senators, Senator Kamala Harris, who's doing a great job representing us in DC, and she supports our position, um, uh, our entire California delegation does, that we need Congress to adopt uh, the new CARES Act and this new, I believe it's called the HEROES Act, that's just got introduced in Congress. And that bill that is sitting right now, waiting to be heard in the Senate, uh, would provide direct aid to cities. And that would allow us to ensure that we have the ability to fund what we need to fund. Because our city employees right now are working so hard on this crisis. It's nonstop every day. And I'm really worried about, about the, the financial health of our city moving forward. Um, but we are gonna present a budget. It will be responsible. Uh, you know, our teams do everything we can to make sure that it's the least impactful. Uh, public safety is the most important thing that we do as a city, so that needs to remain uh, strong. And, and when it's presented, the council will have a lot to debate, and they're gonna have a lot of hard decisions to make when that budget is presented to them over the course of the next few weeks. But uh, your city staff is working on that budget really hard right now. Uh, they are pouring over the numbers. Um, and, and there'll be a, a pretty large presentation uh, that, the, that the, the budget team is gonna make to the city council. Um, uh, they've been making them, but I believe even next week there's gonna be a pretty large presentation made. So you'll be hearing a lot more about the budget uh, in, in, the, in the weeks ahead. And that was probably a lot about the budget, but I think it's an important topic, so. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, one of the questions that we're getting here is about uh, summer programs. Obviously, the city of Long Beach has fantastic summer programs, some of the programs from parks and our junior lifeguards and some of those other programs. What's the plan for that, and, and, and is there, uh, what are we looking like in the future for that, potentially? Well, the, 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 the city hasn't made a decision about, about those yet, but I'm personally, this is not the, the, the health professionals talking, personally, I'm not optimistic that those are, um, that, that, that we're going to have the same type of summer programming that we've had in the past. So as far as what it will look like um, and as far as what programs will be offered, I think the, the health department right now is working and looking at that. And I would expect that, uh, that the, the, there will be announcements in the near future around what kind of youth sports and our, our youth programs in the summer look like. We know that a lot of those programs provide important child care opportunities also for working families. Um, but at the end of the day, those, the decisions are really have to be first and foremost made to protect the health of the community. And so uh, we will be taking the advice uh, and, and be implementing the advice of um, our health professionals who are studying and looking at this issue right now. And so uh, will our youth programs look the same this summer as they did last summer? Absolutely not. And so, uh, uh, and, 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 um, but we don't know what they'll look like yet. And I think that's a discussion that's currently happening. Thank you, Mayor. This question is for Cynthia relative to the airport. So we're gonna transition over to you quickly. And this is one of our Instagram questions. Uh, the question is, why are the, is the airport so strict about face masks required, even if you can maintain six feet of physical distancing? But the guidelines, for instance, say at the beach that that may not be required if you're exercising. So I think, and you'll see this across the nation, airports have implemented this really to ensure that you know, there's so many people coming in and out of the airport and wanting to make sure that, you know, real quickly, you can quickly be within six feet of, of an individual. And so with the queue lines for screening, with the queue lines for getting on aircraft, we really want to make sure that that message is out there to for everyone to have your facial covering on. It just makes it safer for everyone on airport property. It's for the public safety that we're 
thinking of this and why we've implemented it. Thank you. All right, we're going to go back to the mayor for one more question uh, relative to the retail. I, and this is obviously a big concern. A lot of retail owners that are providing comments and feedback on Facebook Live. And, and really, the challenge is, is why is it okay to enter larger chain stores like the Target and the Walmarts, but yet the, the small retail stores, the mom and pops, aren't able to have people come in, even if they can practice physical distancing. What's the plan for that? And, and Mayor, what do you see moving forward in the future? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we don't make the decisions about uh, the question of what, well, why is it okay. I, I understand that frustration, but at the end of the day, we have to follow the state health orders. And I, and I know that a lot of the larger retailers uh, that were allowed to open or considered essential in the initial statewide health order were because they also provided different access to what was considered essential supplies like food or groceries. So um, I, I understand that frustration, um, but um, again, this, the Long Beach Health Department our rules are, are superseded by the statewide health order. And so even if the health department felt that we could open a small retailer tomorrow and do it safely, it's not allowed. And so the only thing that the state department of health allows is curbside pickup at retailers. And that's it. So that's the world we're living in. Uh, I know it's a frustrating answer for, for some, um, but we've got to make the best of what we are allowed to do. However, that does not stop us or slow us down from planning for the future. And I was just yesterday on a, on a conference call with 15 restaurateurs, uh, restaurant owners. Um, I was on a call the other day before that with all the leaders of our arts organizations. I've been talking to different working gr work, uh, groups of workers. Um, we have uh, groups and advisory groups and everyone is discussing how we safely reopen uh, the next, the next uh, set of industries so that when uh, uh, Governor Newsom announces changes to the statewide health order and says, we think we can now more safely have uh, different small retailers open up so folks can walk in, or uh, perhaps there can be some restaurants that could, that could open under these conditions. When those announcements are made, we are doing enormous amount of research to, uh, to figure out how to do it in a way that's the most safe for the public and for the people working at those establishments. Uh, and so that's what we're working on right now because we can't control uh, what's happening at the State Department of Health. And I expect that they are listening also to some really critical, important medical advice and medical professionals. And I know that in our case here in Long Beach, uh, our, our medical teams are looking at our local data and we have to, we, we have to be so careful in not opening up s too fast because the absolute worst thing that we could possibly do at this point is open up fast and then have to go backwards and start closing things again because the hospitalization spiked up. And so I, th I think it's been described that this can't be a light switch, but it's gotta be like a light dimmer and we're just slowly turning on the light dimmer up uh, and, and so we have what we have. I know it's not enough, but it is what it is. And then we'll continue to uh, add building blocks to that. But those building blocks only get added if sometime uh, in the next days and weeks ahead, we haven't seen the spike in our numbers. And so that's what we're looking for. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, as we, before we move on, I want to stress to everyone that's out there and with all these questions we're getting, and our city uh, social media team is responding to a lot of these questions. Please have patience with us. We're trying to get that information to you. A lot of great questions. One of the uh, other questions that we have is the parking permits, and I just want to give everyone that's listening out there an update on the parking permits. Yes, we will be extending the parking permits. So we are encouraging those that are in areas that are impacted uh, by the parking and have been issued those parking permits to please go to our website and look for that additional information on the website. Uh, visit us at www.longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 for that additional information. And for those individuals that are homeowners, landlords, or renters, we are also working right now on a resource guide to provide additional guidance and direction on the services that are not only offered locally, but also at the state level, at the county level, and even at the federal level. So please let us know uh, what you're looking for. We'll try to continue to respond back to you. But again, Mayor, we're gonna turn it back to you for the translation. Great, and now we'll go to, uh, to Alice uh, of the Long Beach Health Department, who's gonna translate for us in Spanish just to, to, to do a recap, thank you. Hola, muy buenas tardes, gracias, alcalde. Um, 
Vamos, buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por estar con nosotros nuevamente. Esta es nuestra sesión informativa del 13 de mayo. Hoy nos acompaña la directora del aeropuerto de Long Beach, Cynthia Guidry, pero vamos a empezar con el resumen del alcalde, como siempre. Desde hoy tenemos um, 1,094 residentes de Long Beach que han probado positivo del coronavirus. El aumento en el número de casos positivos reportados hoy fue causado por una demora en información sobre los resultados de un laboratorio privado que había sido contratado por el condado de Los Ángeles. Aproximadamente 677 personas se han recuperado, que son buenas noticias. Desde nuestra última sesión informativa el lunes, perdimos un, a un residente de Long Beach. Ese fue un, una persona mayor en los 80 años con problemas de salud sub subyacentes y aumenta el total a 49 muertes en Long Beach. 38 de esas 49 muertes están asociados con los centros de enfermería de atención a largo plazo. Las pruebas. Las pruebas continúan siendo un aspecto crítico para el seguimiento, el control, la prevención y de la propagación del coronavirus. Ampliar las opciones de prueba para el virus sigue siendo una prioridad para la ciudad de Long Beach. Hasta la fecha se han realizado casi 20,000 pruebas en la ciudad y tenemos ahorita en este momento la capacidad de a 1,000 al día, por día. Recuerden que las pruebas están disponibles para todos los trabajadores esenciales, independientemente si tiene síntomas o sin síntomas. Para programar una cita de la prueba del coronavirus, visite longbeach.gov barra diagonal COVID-19 o puede llamar al 562 570 4636. Estamos entrando en un nuevo periodo de transición con los consultorios médicos y los proveedores de atención médica que están comenzando a reabrir sus puertas. Este, pero también queremos recordarles que la clínica de evaluación rápida todavía está disponible durante la transición mientras los proveedores principales continúen regresando a sus oficinas y para servir a la comunidad. La, la clínica de evaluación rápida Todavía está disponible a ver a las personas todos los días de 10 a 4 y está localizada en el colegio de Long Beach sobre la PCH. Um, recuerden, otra vez, este, está abierta los 7 días de 10 a 4. Desde el 6 de abril hemos visto 514 pacientes en esa clínica de evaluación rápida. Los pacientes pueden obtener y renovar recetas médicas uh, para alimentos comunes. Atendemos a todos los pacientes independientemente de su, de, sin depender de su estado migratorio, antecedentes raciales, edad, identidad de género o su estado de seguro uh, de salud. No tiene que tener aseguranza para recibir servicios en esta clínica. Puede recibir una prueba del coronavirus también a, a pie. No necesita hacer autoservicio. No se necesita cita y todos los uh, servicios son gratis. Quiero recordarles que las personas que necesitan atención médica también pueden, tienen la opción de llamar a la clínica TCC, um, formalmente conocida como la Children's Clinic, pero ahora se conoce también como TCC Family Health. Es otra opción. Uh, un poco de los datos sobre la apertura de las playas. Desde hoy um, tenemos algunas buenas noticias para compartir con ustedes. En alineación con nuestros socios del Condado de Los Ángeles, hoy reabrimos todas las playas de Long Beach para actividades rec recreativas solamente. Desde el amanecer hasta el atardecer, podrá usar nuestras playas para nadar, caminar, correr, andar en kayak y todo lo que es activo. Sin embargo, no se puede reunir. No puede tomar el sol en la playa, Así es que you know, no es para que traigan sus hieleras, toallas para acostarse en la arena, nomás es para uh, actividades recreativas. Los baños de la playa están abiertos y serán desinfectados regularmente. Incluso hemos aumentado nuestro horario de limpieza para aumentar la salud y seguridad públicas. Uh, también hemos reabierto la playa para los mascotas, conocida como Rosie's Dog Beach. Y todos los parques para perros de la ciudad también volverán a abrir hoy. Pero es muy importante recordar que todavía tenemos que practicar el distanciamiento físico. Um, siempre es muy importante cada vez que salga de su casa traer su cobertura facial a cualquier lugar que vaya porque nunca sabe cuándo va a estar cerca de personas y no tener esa distan distancia física. La repertura gradual de las playas significa un paso hacia, hacia más oportunidades para disfrutar de nuestros espacios al aire abierto. 
Sé que muchos de nuestras comunidades han estado esperando más recreación y los recordamos que a todos continuar practicando el distanciamiento físico para que podamos seguir avanzando um, de manera segura. Enmienda de la orden de salud. El sitio de web de la ciudad se actualizará para reflejar una enmienda a la orden de salud más seguro en el hogar. Además de las playas, quiero compartir algunos otros detalles claves sobre los servicios que están reabriendo en este momento. Los siguientes servicios uh, para mascotas se permiten, como cuando si quieren que sus mascotas sean bañadas o que le corten el pelo, los, todos esos servicios todavía son ofrecidos, pero a la servicio en la calle o en la banqueta sobre, puede dejar su su mascota afuera, pero no los van a dejar entrar a los um, al, al, al sitio, por decir. Este, también han habido muchas preguntas sobre restaurantes. Hay, en las noticias a veces también hay más información que uno tal vez no oye claramente. Hay, sí hay algunos restaurantes en el estado de California que se han reabierto, pero son solamente en zonas rurales del estado, así como muy norte, más pasado norte de como el área de Sacramento, porque en esas áreas hay la, la, el número de personas o la población de personas es más bajo. Nosotros en Long Beach somos una ciudad muy grande. Los condados de Los Ángeles o condados de Orange County, eso no se permite todavía porque somos no calificamos para esos servicios o para reabrir restaurantes en estas áreas porque somos ciudades con, con muchas personas y um, en este momento no se permite. Um, por favor, recuerden que también es muy importante seguir usando las coberturas para la cara. Por favor, um, no, no, no dejen de salir de su casa. Si es que tienen que salir para cosas necesarias y esenciales, es importante siempre um, cargar su cobertura. Ahora, para un, un breve resumen sobre el aeropuerto de Los Ángeles de la directora Cynthia Guidry. Eh, al igual que los aeropuertos en todo el país, el aeropuerto de Long Beach está experimentando una disminución significante en los vuelos y el tráfico de pasajeros como resultado de la pandemia del coronavirus. El número de pasajeros de abril disminuyó aproximadamente 95% en comparación con el mismo periodo del año pasado. La fuerte disminución del número de pasajeros significa una disminución igualmente en los ingresos del aeropuerto. En este momento hemos visto una dis disminución de 10 mil a 20, 20 millones en ingresos operativos que trae el aeropuerto de Long Beach. Esto afecta no solo el aeropuerto, sino también las muchas empresas que dependen del impacto económico que generamos, incluyendo uh, los proveedores de, de alquilar aut uh, los autos, las compañías de estacionamiento, concesiones, nuestra comunidad de avi aviación general y muchos otros. El aeropuerto y las empresas son motores económicos que apoyan a la comunidad local y regional. Um, pero afortunadamente el mes pasado la Administración de, av de Aviación Federal o como se conoce, FAA, asignó um, 18.4 millones en fondos de la ley CARES para que el aeropuerto de Long Beach um, sea, si, si, siga operando. Y fue una gran victoria para nuestro aeropuerto y para nuestra ciudad. Queremos agradecer al alcalde Robert García de Long Beach y todos los de la alcaldía para reconocer el impacto financiero que el coronavirus ha tenido en, en los viajes aéreos y específicamente en, al, en nuestro aeropuerto de, de la ciudad de Long Beach. Um, es muy importante y también queremos recordarles que la, el aeropuerto de Long Beach está siguiendo um, todas las, las pautas del CDC, del Departamento de Salud, para que podamos viajar um, sanamente y con protección. A medida de la economía se abre lentamente, quiero compartir con ustedes algunos de los pasos que el aeropuerto ha tomado para garantizar una experiencia de viaje segura y saludable para todos. Estamos trabajando solamente con aerolíneas y socios comerciales del aeropuerto para mejorar la seguridad, seguir las órdenes de salud y garantizar la experiencia de viaje cómoda por lo que somos conocidos. Hemos intensificado nuestros protocolos de limpieza y desinfección en áreas públicas del aeropuerto. También hemos puesto calcomanías en el piso y otras medidas para asegurar el distanciamiento físico de seis pies. Y como también acaba de anunciar el alcalde, que todos los pasajeros, empleados y visitantes del aeropuerto deben usar coberturas faciales cuando están trabajando en el aeropuerto. 
Esto está en línea con la guía de expertos de salud pública y está consistente con las precauciones tomadas por los aeropuertos en todo el país. Los cinco, las cinco aerolíneas comerciales que prestan servicios en el aeropuerto de Long Beach, así como en las concesiones y las compañías de alquilar los autos, también requieren coberturas faciales, tanto para empleados como los clientes. Um, durante el examen de seguridad que conducta la Administración de Seguridad de Transporte, o como se conoce mejor, TSA, um, sí, tal vez le van a poder pedir bre que brevemente se remueva la cobertura facial cuando están viendo su tarjeta de identif identificación, pero solo será por un momento. Um, es importante recordar que las coberturas faciales deben cubrir la nariz y la boca, ya sea en forma de pañuelos o máscaras de tela. No olviden de mantener la distancia física y lavarse las manos con frecuencia mientras que estén en el aeropuerto, porque todos estamos juntos en esto. Eh, el aeropuerto de Long Beach, por su propia, um, en, de, afuera tienen un pequeño aeropuerto central, ofrece ventajas para viajar en, en, en este mundo que ahora está cambiando por la pandemia de coronavirus. So, Siempre nos han conocido por una experiencia de viaje sin estrés, lejos de las multitudes y la congestión. So, por eso estamos trabajando muy acerca para asegurarnos que esta experiencia um, siga igual o lo más, lo más igual que podamos. Um, también somos el uno de los pocos aeropuertos en la nación que tiene una gran cantidad de espacio al aire libre. Nuestro jardín al aire libre disponible para los pasajeros después que pasan la seguridad. Creemos que todos... Estos elementos son considerados importantes cuando el público comience a volar nuevamente. Estamos ansiosos por darles la bienvenida a nuestros pasajeros. Quiero tomar un momento para agradecer a todos los empleados de primera línea que trabajan en la ciudad de Long Beach. Y eso es toda la información por hoy. Muchas gracias. Great. Well, thank you. Gracias uh, por eso. And thank you again for everyone for watching. We'll be back on Friday. Uh, for another update. We'll have a lot more uh, to report, including a uh, report on uh, trade in the, in the Port of Long Beach and, and how that's impacting Long Beach. Thank you.